Sorry if you, uh, let's see, what, what was the talk that was supposed to be going on? Uh, stop siloing. Yeah. They had to cancel on us. Uh, uh, unfortunately, so. Steve had to cancel on us, so uh, I, I pulled up a talk that I've done a couple times here um, and updated it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm not afraid of 3D guns, and or 3D printed guns, and neither should you. Uh, and uh, I keep saying that I will do a talk that doesn't ink require an I am not a lawyer speech, but this, this ain't one of them. Uh, I am going to talk about a couple firearms laws, but I am not a lawyer, so don't cite me if you do something stupid and get in trouble. Uh, just in case, if you haven't known for the past, since 2013, this thing has caused all sorts of trouble. Uh, this was the first released uh, 3D print, completely 3D printed gun, except for, and you can see there's some screws on there. Uh, and this particular one is chambered in uh, 380 ACP, uh, a little single shot gun um, put out by uh, Cody Wilson um, called the Liberator. And frankly, I think if he had just done this and not called it the Liberator, nobody would have noticed, nobody would have cared. Uh, does anybody know the namesake of the Liberator? Yeah, World War II gun uh, produced specifically right. to assassinate Nazi. Uh, yeah, this thing, which uh, GM came up with this wonderful plan of we can stamp out a zillion of these guys, drop them in a f occupied France, and the French resistance can get them load up a 45 caliber in it and sneak up to a Nazi soldier, pop him in the back of the head with that, grab the soldier's real gun and run off with, with an actual firearm. It's better than a butter knife. It's better than a butter knife, but uh, after some testing they figured out that you get, you're, you're lucky if you can get through an entire box of ammo without the seams just separating on you. Um, only has to work once. Well, oh, that's that's true. It only has to work once. Um, incidentally, this there there's no actual documentation of this ever actually being used in World War II. Um, there is some documentation of I believe the Filipino police carried them for a little while, which is terrifying. But so th this was the gun to get a gun for the uh, people resisting the current government in control. Just, so, the, just the threat of them being out there would have terrified yeah. the German police. Yeah. Uh, so uh, naming your gun after such a thing and, and loudly proclaiming that yes, you, you knew the connection and that was your intent, yeah, that, that makes some governments a little nervous. Uh, this is the uh, Liberator actually uh, ready to fire. You can see that he went ahead and printed out three barrels because, well, chances are he was going to melt one or two of them. Um, and you can see that nail, that's the firing pin. Uh, very simplistic stuff. You actually have to take the barrel off to reload the thing. So, again, uh, you, yeah, if you only need the one shot, you can get it, but reloading it is going to take a little while. Um, and where we stand today, uh, and actually I need to, well, that federal lawsuit got settled. There's a couple, there's a couple state lawsuits that are still going on, um, saying that yes, 3D printed guns are perfectly legal uh, in most states. Uh, California, I think you have to register them. Um, so again, check local laws as far as what what it is to build your own firearm. Uh, and uh, there is still an ongoing lawsuit with New Jersey that there was just some movement on it a couple days ago, um, which the uh, distributed defense 
which is Cody Wilson's company, is pushing for it to go to the Supreme Court at this point, basically. Um, and yeah, the AGs from 21 states decided to pile on on the court case. Uh, and there are some weird things like a judge ruled that, well, you can sell the plans, but you can't just post them on the internet for anyone to get for free. And some other goofy things. And of course, in the meantime, if you haven't kept up with the news, Cody Wilson um, got caught uh, hiring slash hooking up with an underage girl through a website that was called something like sugardaddies.com or something like that. And uh, briefly fled to Thailand, I believe, and and then turned himself in and has since pleaded guilty to that and is currently sitting in a jail cell. So uh, defense distributed is still going on, but I think we're not going to hear a whole lot more from Cody Wilson, which which is a shame because he's he's said some really wonderful sound bites. Um, I touched on the legalities of it a little bit. Uh, it is legal to make a firearm without any registration, serialization, whatever, in most states, as long as you're making it for yourself. If you're making it to sell, you have to, you have to go through the license process of becoming a licensed firearms manufacturer and all that fun stuff. Um, there is one thing that you uh, do need to be careful of when you're making 3D printed guns, which is the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988, which is largely because of the movie Die Hard 2. Uh, if anybody remembers Die Hard 2, the, the talk of the porcelain Glocks that cost more than a cop's salary and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that caused a bunch of a bunch of lawmakers to be deeply concerned that such a gun existed, which it didn't. Um, and does it. And, and still doesn't, yeah. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there is no functioning porcelain firearm. Uh, but Congress decided that they were scared enough about it that they actually made a law banning uh, guns that, don't, that won't set off metal detectors. And at the time, the firearms industry had other things to worry about than fighting laws to ban things that didn't Aww. exist. And, they didn't really think ever would exist. So there has to be a certain amount of ferrous metal in any firearm that you have. Um, and similarly, any other gun laws that pertain to where you live. No, you, you can't make a short barreled rifle, you can't make a machine gun, all of that fun stuff. Um, and of course, there's ITAR. Because the federal government has decided that this, the ability to build this, is dangerous enough to be a military secret. Think about that for a minute. Um, so, uh, and, and that's actually part of the reasoning behind the judge saying you can't just post it on the internet for anyone to download because, well, uh, there's no way that you, there's no mechanism for you to make sure that someone in Iran's not downloading it. Um, Ooh, scary. Yeah, right. Uh, again, the, uh, oh no, not a single shot pistol that probably melts on you. Yeah, I would, I would say that, I would say the Iranian government would be worried about that more than the American government. Right. That's why. Um, and of course, other things to consider. One is cost. Uh, since I put, since I originally did this, the cost of 3D printers has come down considerably. Um, I've seen people have produced them on 3D printers that cost 200 bucks, but that's still, you know. Really? Two, I'm killing you. This is like one of the $200 printers. Um, no, they've successfully done it. Uh, appar apparently, you can. Uh, at, at, I mean, that's also part of the technical know-how of you, you need to know what materials you can use so it doesn't blow up on you and... I had to use a $100,000 Stratasys that has the materials that were at 
Yeah. Nope. Uh, ABS plastic. Yep. Um, and also, it's not, you might, uh, you know, a lot of the news reports make it sound like it's a Star Trek replicator that you push a button and out comes a ready gun. It's like, no, you, you, you push a button and you, you wait half a day and you got a pile of parts. <laughs> and then you need to assemble it. Uh, and you need to be able, and, you know, it, how many folks in here have played with 3D printers before? Yeah. How how twitchy is a 3D printer? Yeah, we might print three or four times before it. it exactly. Um, and as you pointed out, of course, durability. You're, I mean, with with the legalities thing, is the uh, for most pistols and and rifles, etc. For example, you're supposed to have a rifled barrel. I'm pretty sure plastic rifling will get smoothed out after that first shot, much less anything else. Um, Plus, layer adhesion on a basic 3D printer, usually you don't have great layer adhesion. Right, yeah. Um, and of course, with, without good rifling, your accuracy is going to be crap, right? Uh, so, so you have all these things to consider. Uh, you're, you're spending, oh, you know, a few hundred dollars you need, it's, it's going to take you a long time to do it, and all this, that, and the other. Or you could buy this thing. This is a 9mm Cobra brand Derringer that I picked up for 100 bucks at a pawn shop. As far as actual manufactured pistols go, it, it's a piece of junk. That said, it does go bang every time I pull the trigger on it, and the bullet does go vaguely where I want it to go. Um, I also, in previous presentations, I've also put up high point pistols, if anybody's handled those bricks, um, that, again, you can buy a semi-auto uh, nine millimeter pistol for 125 bucks that usually works. Uh, and you don't have, and you don't really have to worry about it turning into a grenade in your hand when you pull the trigger. Uh, so if there's all these complications and all this, that, and the other, why, why should I care? Um, one, um, a lot of companies are actually blocking this information. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you try to post a post on Facebook right now with uh, to, with a link to codeisfreespeech.com, which um, when they weren't in the middle of a lawsuit with New Jersey, had a bunch of this information on it, uh, Facebook's algorithm will automatically block the post and tell you that it's a violation of their terms of service. Um, I've, I've asked them to point out exactly where in the terms of service, and of course, being a giant internet company, they've been extremely silent on the matter. Uh, also, similarly, one of my buddies got Amazon to print out the code in, uh, for the Liberator in book form for a while, and then Forbes did an article on it. And when Forbes reached out to Amazon asking for comment, Amazon's response was basically, we're doing what now? And pulled the book. Uh, so, and like I said, you know, there is a brief forward. The uh, rest of the text is a little dry and difficult at times. <laughs> but uh, if anyone's interested in looking at it, uh, and uh, there is always the question of how do we feel about legally suppressing computer code. Right now in Australia, if you get caught with possession of the code to print out a 3D printer, or a 3D printed gun, you can get hit with up to 14 years in jail, which I think is a bit extreme. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, we can all see parallels of this with uh, encryption. The sound for for those of you that remember the uh, encryption wars of the 90s. 
A lot of this sound familiar? Clipper chip. Um, and like I said, you know, possession of that book in Australia could get me 14 years in jail. Um, and of course, finally, the cat's out of the bag. Uh, the first one, the first 3D printed gun, like I said, uh, was shown off in 2013. When was the last time you saw anybody successfully uh, suppress technology, especially from people that want to do bad things with it? It's out there. Um, there unfortunately have been a couple instances where uh, the police have, have found 3D printed guns in the hands of criminals. Um, I saw, actually speaking of Australia, I saw one article a couple days ago um, where the police claimed that uh, a, drug, uh, a drug gang had 3D printed machine guns. Now, of course, I will put the caveat on it that if anybody has paid attention to how the press reports firearms, uh, on firearms, whether it was actually a machine gun or not, and whether it was functional at all or not, is always questionable. But it's obviously propaganda. 3D printed guns. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so you know, it, it e even if you're not really all that interested in in printing this stuff out, it is something to think about and something to watch. Uh, and of course, since then, things have gotten a little bit more advanced. Uh, this is a 22 revolver that I'm sure a bunch of you could see the uh, resemblance to a certain item in the toy, toy aisle. Um, by the way, if anybody's interested, the snow down here, yeah, it's it's a bitmap, and if you run it through and look at it as a text, well, there's some code there. <laughs> so if anybody's interested, I, I can give you a copy afterwards. Um, and also, lately, there's been a bunch of people 3D printing uh, AR-15 magazines and Glock lowers and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, and uh, this is a pretty good close-up of a gun that I thought was really neat just because I, I like the zigzag pattern of, of zigzag revolvers. Uh, unfortunately, this particular one uh, was printed up by a man in Japan. Um, and. Uh, there's some footage of him firing it with black powder that he swears up and down he didn't put any, uh, he didn't put a pellet in it or anything. But in Japan, uh, firearms are pretty much banned outright. So uh, he went to jail for it. Uh, so like I said, make sure you know what your laws are locally. And if your local laws say don't do it, don't do it. It's not worth going to jail for. Um, also, I've seen a bunch of them that, honestly, I, I think this needs to show up in a sci-fi movie. Uh, again, you can see the zigzag pattern. You, you can see the development from that early stage, um, and that's one of the re that that's one of the reasons why I like watching the the 3D printed gun world. Is you get to see all of this development from people that just like in every other industry. Now that we've got it so that an individual at home can start tinkering, you, you can see all sorts of new neat designs coming out that a major manufacturer probably wouldn't play with just because, uh, well, I can see a lot of people in the gun industry just going, no, that, that looks dumb and stupid and, and too outside the norm. but. I, I think it looks really neat. Um, and uh, this is uh, someone in uh, Canada built one based on the Liberator. And you can see the plastic springs up top. Um, and Canada is kind of interesting because while they 
in general have stricter gun laws than we do. Um, they don't care about short barreled rifles. If you, if you can legally own a rifle, you can legally own a short barreled rifle. Um, which is an argument we can have later. I, I think that part of the NFA is dumb. I, I, I understand some of the context back in, in the background of it, but um, but any, at, at any rate, I just thought it was pretty neat that that somebody took took the Liberator pistol and made it look and feel a bit better than that first clunky version. Uh, and folks have also built um, some other neat uh, one-shot guns, which this one's pretty interesting because the barrel is actually that blue spot there. And to load it and unload it, you can just push the barrel out the side. Um, and this particular example is a 22, but someone has used this design to build a and fire a 357 Magnum. Uh, I will say that he did have to reinforce part of it with a zip tie, which braver man than I am, because if you were telling me, yes, I'm going to need to worry about reinforcing something using a plastic zip tie, and we're talking about a small explosion in your hand. Are those rubber bands on the trigger, bottom of the trigger, and on the back of the slide? Yes. That is in, in lieu of a hammer spring. He uses, uh, this design uses rubber bands for the tension for the hammer. Have to ban rubber bands, I guess. Exactly, and, and that's and that's also part of the problem is, you know, a, you, you can't down to the materials. The what, what are you going to do? Um, and this is it disassembled. You can see that he threw in a couple washers to stay legal. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see that little hole right there where you could poke a finger in to push the barrel out the side, so to pull the barrel out, extract the round, put a new round in, put it in. Uh, incidentally, where I was talking about with the 357 Magnum, where he needed to reinforce it was right near the muzzle. Uh, that part right there was apparently seeing a good bit of stress and it was delaminating. But the zip tie put it together, kept it together, so. It was trying to put like a Um, I, I sure it's, I'm sure it's been tried, um, and and there's been a number of folks that have made 3D printed guns where they've where they have used a metal tube as as the actual barrel, or a, you know or put in a sleeve of some sort. Um, and of course, beyond the uh, trying to build the entire thing from the ground up as a 3D printed gun. A lot of folks are doing 3D printed receivers. So, quick note if you're not up on legalities with firearms, uh, in the United States, the only part that is legally controlled is the receiver, which is in general where the trigger group is housed and the barrel attaches, the bolt, and all that. That, in general. Uh, so if you can 3D print that, you can buy all the other pieces, the, the barrel, the bolt, the trigger, all the springs. Those are all legally accessories. Uh, so once, once you can build, and this is just a 3D printed uh, 1022 receiver. So this is the original 1022 receiver that is, ser is a serialized part, is controlled part, and then this is the uh, plastic 3D printed one. Um, and in fact, many people have 3D printed AR-15 lowers, uh, lower receivers. Uh, and there's a, there's a CAD representation. You can see that what they do is they, they print it out in parts and then bolt them together. 
uh, the AR-15 actually uh, goes pretty well for that because the uh, lower receiver, really there's not a whole lot of high pressure stuff going on uh, in the lower receiver of an AR. So I've actually, there's actually been a couple folks that have made AR receivers out of plywood and some bolts. It's just, okay, cool. And of course, if you're doing uh, 3D printed stuff, you can have fun with it. You, you can make some, uh, you, you can do uh, designs that are just goofy. Um, and similarly, you can uh, play with things that, this is an AR-15 with a uh, 3D printed lower that is Clearly, not anything near stock. Yes, sir. I was just going to say you can buy those lower receivers 80% finished. Yes, sir. And uh, they have no serial number on them. Mm -hmm. And these days, when they sell them, they sell them with a plastic mold that has all of the holes preset where you can drill out the, the holes that need to be uh, done to finish them. And they sell it with the necessary drill bits and the one milling tool that is yep. required. And so it's really a kit. Yeah, I, and, I've, I've actually got a picture of one of those later on. And it takes about 20 minutes to, to yeah. do one. It's a lot yeah. quicker than 3D printing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and just in case if anybody's interested, there's a uh, graphics representation of the various parts. Um, and as you said, you know, obviously that's going to take a while to print out all of those bits. But it means you can play with it, come up with some new interesting ideas, and uh, rapid prototype it. Um, or you can just go completely gonzo with it. Uh, this is actually a 3D printed railgun that is functional. Um, it also weighs about 20 pounds. <laughs> railgun? Railgun. What does that mean? Probably mostly uh, it actually uh, throws out the projectile using uh, magnets. Um, uses about 1,800 joules of energy, um, which sounds like a lot, but unfortunately, uh, folks have keep playing with railguns, try to see if it works, um, but. Uh, that will, at that power, the guy tested it, and it would put a projectile into a cantaloupe, but not through it, which, uh, yeah, short range, that's still, uh, I, I wouldn't want to get hit by it, but also for, you know, carrying 20 pounds of stuff, I'd, I'd want something a little bit more powerful. Um, that, that one looks like he was trying to, Come up with something out of video games. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ridiculously oversized weapon. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, again, I want to see this in a sci-fi movie. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, for the 3D printed gun side of things, um, uh, this is the future. Uh, this is a 1911 that has been 3D printed. Everything except for the springs and the magazine. Um, a uh, company, I believe, down in Texas did it as a proof of concept saying that, hey, our metal 3D printers do actually print things that are rugged and strong. Um, they made this guy, uh, ran it through 5,000 rounds uh, without any failures which I can think of a couple commercial 1911 brands that can't say the same thing. So basically the metal 3D printing is more like a super sophisticated blade in multiple dimensions, right? Um, I believe it's actually a uh, powder base. Oh, so it's building it up? Yeah, it, it's, uh, so it's not a CNC machine. Okay. Laser centering? Like yeah. 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 It's just a heating process after yeah. so you build up the part and then there's a healing process. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, there, there, are, there have been people that have been using CNC machines for a long time. A, a, lot, a, lot, of the, uh, a lot of the commercial companies use CNC all machines for parts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just about all of them. Um, 
that's one of the major forms of manufacturing at this point, right? Um, and, you know, the big reason why I'm just not that concerned about, I don't understand the panic over 3D printed guns is because, well, there, there, there's that. Yeah, zip gun. No, and this one, the guy got fancy and put a silencer on it. <laughs> uh, clearly, this is some brass fittings with a spring and a nail, uh, a little bit of drill work that, if you're vaguely capable in a shop, you can do. You have to outlaw plumbing. Exactly. There's no other choice. Uh, and uh, this one, you can see the guy was using, uh, I believe that's a 22 short. Subsonic. Or there might be sub 22 subsonic. Uh, well, it's, yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's subsonic. Sonic. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I think that might actually be. And that's why the suppressor works. Yeah. Um, and suppressors, that's, that's an entire different brand of mine. Um, and of course, you get people to get a little bit fancier and put a grip on it to make it a little bit more ergonomic. Again, this is something that most folks in middle school shop class would be able to churn out. Um, I've heard stories. You can get them off for a making zip guns out of car in town, so it seems like you would have a better than even odds of blowing up in your hand. Yeah, yeah. From the uh, 50s when car antennas, antennas were a little bit. Telescoping antennas, yep. you could just break them off, and one of the segments would be just the right size for a 22. Exactly. Uh, and uh, it's not just in this country. Uh, this, this is a zip gun that uh, was found in India, where guns are highly uh, regulated. Um, again, pretty much straight up banned, unless if you're part of the government. Uh, and this particular one that was confiscated, you can see the guy had actually found the right pipe fittings for multiple calibers. Uh, looks like a 22, maybe a 9 millimeter, and then a uh, 12 gauge shell. That's because it was the ammunition that was hard to get. Exactly, yeah, because India also has, uh, you, you can get in deep, deep trouble just having the ammunition on you. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. This is actually a shotgun made out of a caulk gun. Uh, you, you can see it right here with the, <laughs> the trigger and spring. You can also make them out of staple guns. Uh, that one's cool. Um, and uh, anybody know what this is? I'm guessing it's a gun. Good. <laughs> it's an AK-47 receiver. Just it hasn't been stamped yet. So as long as you know, you, you get this flat sheet of metal, make the correct holes in it, fold it like a taco, and there legally is your AK-47 receiver, which is the gun, and you can get the rest of the stuff legally. Um, and there are a bunch of places that sell these things. Um, and if you can't find one for sale, well, this guy made one out of a shovel. Uh, he actually took the shovel blade and made it into the uh, AK-47 receiver um, and uh, decided for giggles, yeah, I'll just use the handle as, as the stock. Um, I particularly like it balancing on the bottle of Stoli. Um, he tested it and it did work. Um, I forget exactly what he used for the barrel. Um, but. Uh, uh, reading that guy's web web page, he was a bit of a character. Um, and of course, uh, you can also make a machine gun from stuff that you can easily find at Home Depot. Uh, this is a uh, gun that basically works like a Sten gun, which again is basically a tube and a spring 
and a firing pin. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, there are instructions on how to do it on the internet. That's all I'm going to tell you about that. If you want, if you want to find the way to make a machine gun, uh, you can find it on Google. Uh, <laughs> is that auto or semi-auto? Uh, this one uh, is full auto. The guy that posted it swears up and down that there's not a firing pin in it. Therefore, it's legal. Just, just keep in mind that doing a Google search for how to make a machine gun pretty well guarantees you're going to go on a watch list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm on all the lists at this point. Um, the, uh, and, and part of that is it is actually easier to manufacture a machine gun than it is to make a semi-auto. Uh, because basically the difference between a machine gun and a semi-auto is a semi-auto has a uh, sear in it that, or a uh, trigger disconnect, uh, so that when you pull the trigger, it fires, and when it comes back, uh, something catches the hammer to stop the hammer from falling again. Without and it, that, it would prefer to just keep going. Exactly. Uh, and uh, there it is in disassembled state. I'm sure if you stared at it that long enough, you could probably figure out which aisles at Home Depot to go down. Uh, and uh, there is a much closer replica of a Sten gun. Again, made out of parts that you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's, wherever. Um, uh, here is a Mac 11 clone built out of uh, box tubes that, again, you can buy at your local hardware store. Um, most of the time, folks do use commercial uh, pre-built magazines because, oddly enough, out of everything, magazines are probably the hardest thing to build and get right because uh, there's a lot of geometry that has to be exactly right and spring tension that has to be exactly right and all that fun stuff. Um, as you were talking about... You said magazines? Yes. Uh, as you were talking about, there's always the 80% uh, lowers, which when I originally put this, this slide show together, uh, AR-15s were pretty much what you would find where... Do, does anyone not know what I'm talking about with an 80% with an lower? I don't know. Okay. So, basically there's the question of where's the difference between I have a chunk of aluminum and I have a receiver that now I need to make sure that the ATF knows about, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and while it's never been quite exactly stated, the ATF and the community have kind of come across, kind of come to the conclusion that, well, if it's 80% done, whatever that exactly means, then then it's still just an oddly shaped chunk of material instead of a gun, right? So to complete this, you'd still have to drill out the holes here, uh, some of the holes here. There's some places for pins that you'd have to drill, uh, which this red thing is a jig that you slap it on and it guides you through. Here's where you drill. Um, and since then, there's also been folks have come out with 80% uh, low, 80% uh, 80 receivers for Glock pistols, in case you want to build your own Glock at home, uh, and and all that fun stuff. Um, and also, we were talking about CNC machines earlier. Uh, Distributed Defense sells what they call the Ghost Gunner, which is a CNC machine about yay big, which you can get uh, pre-programmed files for, okay, I've got an AR lower that's an 80% lower. I can put that in there, load up the correct program, hit the button, and the CNC machine will take care of actually producing it for you. Uh, interestingly enough, the ATF for years 
has been telling people that if you own the equipment, you can't rent it out so that somebody just comes by, gives you some money, hits the big red button. Uh, that's the ATF was not considering that as then manufacturing it, but you manufacturing it because you owned the equipment and did most of the work. In practice recently, the one guy that they've gone after for doing just that, they recently uh, dropped the case and decided that they'd rather not prosecute. Um, so it very well may be, and the ATF has done this in the past where they try to, well, we really don't have legal standing, but this is the way we think it's supposed to go. And so we'll just see if we can just bully people into uh, pleading a lesser charge or whatever. Um, and this particular guy was willing and had the pocket book to fight it for a couple years and it still hadn't seen the inside, it still hadn't gotten in front of a jury yet. Um, and uh, the ATF decided to drop it. What that exactly means, I, I'm not entirely certain. But if you want, if you want to buy one of these, you can get a, a CNC machine from them. And you can, incidentally, you can put whatever program you want, so you have a small CNC machine that'll do just about anything that, it, that you would expect it to be able to for a couple grand from them, which compared to the commercial ones, that's pretty cheap. That's, that's getting down into uh, fairly reasonable and affordable. Last I knew it was about 16. Uh, yeah, it was like 1500 to 2000 depending on, uh, they just came out with a new version of it, and I can't remember The original the version was. was 1200 and then when they came out with the Ghost and Gunner 2, that had the ability to load the additional yeah. uh, profiles, and I think they bumped that up to 1600 Yeah, and that first one was, I saw the pre-order price, I never saw the actual sales price, so. Um, by the way, if anybody's interested, um, these three sites, uh, homemadeguns.wordpress.com is where I found most of the zip gun pictures. Um, uh, Defdist.org is, of course, uh, uh, defense distributed. Uh, and also printedfirearms.com is, is a pretty good resource as well. Uh, and uh, like I said, also, uh, Code is free speech is where some of it, a, a bunch of it migrated to. Um, and right now you can find some pretty good info on the ongoing court cases there. So uh, let's hear. I know I rushed through things a good bit because I always tend to talk too long. And this time I've actually got a few minutes. Uh, anybody have any questions?